How to draft a joint venture agreement. A joint venture is a formal relationship where two or more companies join together in order to take part in a specific activity. There are two main ways to set up a joint venture. First, you and the partner company can set up a third, and separate, legal entity. For example, you and the partner company could form a separate corporation or LLC and conduct the joint venture's business through that new entity. If you are interested in this option, learn how to form a corporation. Second, you and the partner company can enter into a joint venture agreement. Here, you and the other company would enter into a contract that would set out the terms of the joint venture. Joint venture agreements are usually advantageous when the joint venture is large and complex and you want an agreement to set forth the requirements of both parties, 1. Planning the relationship. Assess your needs in a partner. A joint venture can be an advantageous business relationship when your partner has the ability to do something you do not. In addition, you must be able to bring something to the table that your partner doesn't have. When you start thinking about entering into a joint venture, start by assessing what you need in a partner, i.e., what your business objectives are. For example, you might have developed a new technology but you lack the resources to bring it to the appropriate market. If this is the case, you might look for a partner with a strong presence in your particular market so they can help you sell, promote, and distribute your product. In another example, you might have started a new brewery but you lack the distribution connections to get your beer into stores across the United States. In this case, you might look for a partner with experience launching new alcoholic beverages into a nationwide market. Your partner may be able to help you contract with national distributors with connections to large retail stores. Focus on finding a good fit. Once you understand what you need out of a partner, you need to identify companies that would be a good fit. Your business and a partner company will need to be able to work well together and both partners will need to gain something of value. When you reach out to possible partners, spend time together learning about the core values of that potential partner. Ask yourself whether they are open to collaboration, whether the corporate cultures of each company mesh, whether the partner is financially secure enough to enter into a partnership, and whether you can trust the potential partner. If you do not have a good fit between you and your partner, it is unlikely that you will be able to effectively make decisions and work together. 3. Identify the scope and purpose of the joint venture. Once you find a partner that shares your values, can help you meet your needs, and can gain something from you in return, you will need to begin planning the joint venture relationship. The first thing you and your future partner should do is define the scope and purpose of your joint venture. The scope and purpose of your joint venture should describe why you and the other business are entering into the joint venture relationship. These initial identifications may be broad and may touch on other issues needing to be discussed and ironed out later. However, thinking about them now will help you determine what type of work will need to be done down the road. You and your potential partner should consider what activities you and your partner expressly intend to do or refrain from doing. Whether a joint venture might create conflicts with existing business partners and if so how to avoid them whether any intellectual property will need to be shared. Determine how a joint venture will affect your existing operations. Another major consideration to make before entering into a joint venture is how a relationship might affect your business as it currently operates. If a joint venture will affect your existing operations negatively, it might not be a good idea to enter into the relationship. The following are just a few considerations you will have to take account of. Where will capital or assets come from in your company and what areas of your business will no longer have access to that capital or those assets due to the joint venture? Will employees be taken away from their usual duties so they can help with the joint venture e.g., will your financial team have to make additional spreadsheets, more annual filings, etc.? Will you have to get third-party approval from banks and other existing parties in order to implement the joint venture? Will you have to restructure any part of your business to make room for the joint venture? Prepare internally. Before you enter into a joint venture, your partner will want to know all about your business to make sure they are making a good decision. You will want to do the same to make sure the relationship makes good business sense on your end. In order to learn about each other, both you and your partner will have to prepare internally to exchange important information. Start by identifying every facet of your business that will be involved in the joint venture. Next, put a process in place to make sure necessary information can be transmitted between and within you and your partner's business. This preparation will ensure that your partner will have access to the information they need to make an informed decision. You should request that your partner do the same internal planning on their end. Remember, if your partner is not willing to work with you before the joint venture agreement is signed, the relationship is unlikely to work after the agreement is signed as well. Consider drafting a confidentiality agreement. Before any confidential information is exchanged, you and your partner will want to sign a confidentiality agreement aka, a non-disclosure agreement. This type of agreement will ensure that sensitive business information will not be disseminated outside of the joint venture. During your initial preparations and negotiations, a lot of sensitive information is being passed between businesses and you want to do everything in your power to make sure it doesn't get leaked.
Execute a letter of intent. If you and your possible partner are satisfied with the discussions up to this point, one party should offer up a letter of intent LOI. An LOI outlines the preliminary terms of the joint venture and acts as an agreement to agree. The LOI formalizes your preliminary discussions before negotiations get underway. The LOI can either be binding or non-binding depending on your wishes and the wishes of the other party. If non-binding, an LOI simply lays out the joint venture with a promise to negotiate. If binding, an LOI can create rules of negotiation and a description of an adequate agreement. 8. 